Divisive Legend tuning in now. Okay, today's video is going to be about Black Lives Matter. And I'm going to expose the truth about Black Lives Matter because there was a time point in my life where I was affiliated with Black Lives Matter and went away from the movement because of the things that it promoted and the things that the movement was saying. And just the entire movement itself. So, here we go. I got involved with Black Lives Matter during the 4th Precinct shutdown in Minneapolis right after Jamar Clark was shot by police. The reason I got involved with it was because I had my feelings about it. There was the reports of him being handcuffed. And I had a friend who was very involved with the movement. So, he knew I had some issues with how it happened. And I was invited to join him during the protest. I was, I had reservations at first because I had heard things about it from media and I had seen some of the violence such as Ferguson, Baltimore, things like that. But he swore there was none of that, it was a peaceful movement, there was no hatred towards whites and that there were whites that were a part of the movement. So I gave him the benefit of the doubt, I went out there at the 4th Precinct and I was there for some of it, and during the time that, the times that I was there, there was no violence in front of me at that point. So I didn't have much to say about it. And there were people there who, it was more than just Black Lives Matter that was at the 4th Precinct. There was other groups that were there. There were pro-immigrant groups, and they were exciting their first. I was out there more because I wanted accountability for police, and I wanted to be able to prove if there was police misconduct, I wanted there to be able to be proof of it, and I was told there was body camera things. Now, the 4th Precinct, I was off and on there because I was living somewhere else. But when Philando Castile got shot in Falcon Heights, Minnesota, and it was the protest at the governor's mansion, I was involved in that as well. This is where I started to have my issues with BLM. Because after the Philando Castile shooting, while I was there, I was a lot more involved. Because that shooting, I did not agree with at all. And I felt that there was some fear in the officer, and the officer acted impulsively. But what happened here is that during the time I was there, I'm going to tell you every single thing I heard and saw from the people involved in the Black Lives Matter movement. <clears throat> when I came out there, you know, it was the first night. It was a very, very fun night. There was partying. You know, we were partying. It was in front of the governor's mansion. We were partying. We were having fun. You know, there was some alcohol. There was some weed. Okay. But what ended up happening is I stayed around. And I was there more frequently than I was at the 4th Precinct. And the things that I heard from the people involved in the movement and the things that I saw from the people involved in the movement opened my eyes to Black Lives Matter a lot and it caused me to do a lot more research into the movement history and into the actual issues they were out there protesting. During the time I was out there, I saw that there were people who were just, it was nothing but a giant party. It was literally just a giant hippie fest. There were people that were living out there that were homeless, which I don't have a problem with homeless people. I don't have a problem with that. But it was essentially a homeless spot, which is where the homeless primarily went to. The people who were out there were primarily Bernie Sanders supporters, anti-Trumpers, things like that. You know, we all know that. And I had been a Trump supporter prior to going out there. When I, you know, I had some debates with some of the people out there. We had intelligent debates, which is hard to believe considering it was liberals, but we had intelligent debates. Now, there were other people that I debated with. I was talking to somebody about the amount of police killings, and we were talking about the root causes of all the police killings. And the person essentially was saying that the reason police were killing blacks is because they feel their white privilege is threatened and they need to eliminate blacks by committing a genocide through the police. I disagreed with that. He said that 
blacks are stopped by police at a substantially higher rate due to their race. I disagreed with that. What I pointed out is that the reason I was out there protesting is because I felt that we needed better jobs in the black communities, we needed better education in the black communities, and we needed more police accountability in general. Not just for blacks, but for whites as well. And then he started talking about blacks don't commit crimes anywhere near as much as whites do. And then I asked him, if that's the case, then why do blacks commit 52% of the murders in the country while only being 13% of the population? And that police and whites, how could they not naturally have a fear towards a group of people when they kill each other at such an alarming rate? They commit crime at such an alarming rate. And then every time that something happens that they do not like, they start looting, they start setting fires, and they start burning things down. And the moment I said that, I was told that I'm victim blaming and that what I was saying is like blaming the rapist, is like blaming the rape victim for being raped. And I disagreed with that. I stated that if there's a factual reason for something, then it needs to be addressed and that we should be out here addressing the issues that I'm stating as well if we want to truly help the black community. We need to de-incentivize welfare, which incentivizes single black mothers to just kick out the father of the child because it threatens their welfare check and the amount that they're getting. It threatens their food stamps. All that. I mentioned that. I brought up the fact that there was a lot of violence within the black community that needed to be addressed as well because that would that would accept the fact that there's a higher crime rate because if we can address the black on black violence and the black on black murder then we actually would have a point to say that they are racially targeted more so than other races and i had a debate with one of the actual lead organizers of the black lives matter movement in st paul his name was Brian Allen, and during this debate with him, I was called a racist, and I was called an Uncle Tom because I said that blacks need to address the killing of each other just like they need to address the killings by police that are racially motivated because there is racism in the United States. There's racism everywhere. Now, I'm going to talk about the things that I heard the organizers saying out there and some of the lies that you were told about Black Lives Matter. Okay, they say that they are a peaceful protest, a peaceful movement, as we've seen from Ferguson, Baltimore, things like that. That's obviously not true. They try to excuse that by saying that those are outside agitators that are involved, but I'm going to mention one of the organizers again, Brian Allen. During the time that I was out there, I was able, I overheard him in conversation with other people saying that if Geronimo Yanez is not charged in the murder of Philando Castile, that they will burn down the governor's mansion. And then there was talk as well about going beyond that and burning down the mansions that are on Summit Avenue with the governor's mansion. There was another person who was out there. His name was Curtis Avent. He mentioned burning down City Hall. He mentioned burning down the Capitol building. He mentioned burning down the police station. These are all things that were mentioned by organizers of Black Lives Matter St. Paul. And people were behind it. I was not behind that. I stated to them that I was not behind that and that the only reason that they want to burn things down is because they don't know how to handle their anger and they don't want to go through the proper channels of dealing with it. And I was told, no, the reason that they want to burn down things is because, it, is because they need to burn down what these white people have and they need to attack the white privilege so that their voices can be heard. Now, I'm half black. I'm black. I'm white. I primarily identify myself as black. I take pride in my black culture. I have family that was involved in the civil rights movement of the 60s. And I was out there to help them. And I'm considered to be a traitor to them because I did not agree with their false narrative of white privilege. I grew up 
in black communities early in my life and moved to a predominantly white community. During the time in a predominantly white community, there was less violence, there was significantly less crime in general. And when I said that, I was called a liar and I was told that I was pushing the media's narrative and I was pushing all of the establishment's narrative. Okay, with the media, I asked one of the organizers why they were kicking out the mainstream media that was trying to come in because the media would actually help them get their voices heard. And what he ended up telling me is that the reason they do not want the media there is because it is white media that will promote what, that will only show what they want. They will only show the protesters being violent. But no, they're not going to show the protesters being violent if you're not being violent. The reason they did not want the media there was because they did not want the media to be able to say and expose the same things that I am saying now. CNN is the only media they really approved of is the liberal media because the liberal media held back a lot of things that Black Lives Matter was actually doing. They edited a video, you can Google this, where a black woman was talking about let's go burn down the white suburbs. Which, that's not the first time I had heard it when they edited that, because they were talking about that when I was in a Black Lives Matter rally at the governor's mansion. They were talking about burning down the governor's mansion and burning down major parts of downtown St. Paul, which is a major city. This is the state's capital. They were talking about burning down the capitol building as well as the St. Paul Police Department. They were talking about going out to the white suburban area of Roseville, Minnesota, and burning down the suburban areas out there if Philando Castile was not charged. Police were scared to even come in and do anything to the organizers because they were afraid of being called racist. The police were afraid to do their jobs. When I tried to report these things to the police department that was out there, because I actually did try to report that because I don't want anybody getting hurt. I do not want violence. I don't want fires. I don't, okay, there's people that could be in those houses that they're trying to burn down. Those businesses that they're trying to burn down are jobs that could be given to the black community. Why are you destroying your own opportunities? And I was kicked out of the Black Lives Matter movement. I'll admit to this. I was kicked out of the Black Lives Matter movement because I was voicing things that went against their narrative. They were speaking about white privilege. And I voiced that. I don't believe in white privilege because as a black person who takes pride in it, I have had just as many opportunities as every single white friend that I have while living in a predominantly white community as one of only three African American people. I had just as much opportunity as everyone else. There is no white privilege. There is black privilege because People have a harder time calling me racist when I say the things that I am saying right now because of the fact I have what's called the armor of brown skin, as I call it. And I coined somebody for saying it. I don't even remember the name, but somebody said I have armor of brown skin and to use this awesome privilege of mine. And when the Black Lives Matter movement, they're not even out there by themselves. It's more than just the Black Lives Matter movement. Another thing that I saw that was an issue was there were communist movements out there. There was actually a movement out there that was promoting communism and actually being communist party. There was people handing out pamphlets about the communist party and trying to advertise the communist party. There were people out there dancing to music that involved using the word nigger they were dancing to the same music that was a lot of this rap where they were talking about shooting, killing police, killing each other, just gun violence, gang violence. There was a lot of that being promoted in their music that they were playing while they were partying. There was a lot of alcoholism out there. There was a lot of drug usage out there. And they were out there, everybody who was white that was involved in the Black Lives Matter movement was not considered to be a fellow protester. They were referred to, and I quote, as a white ally. And they would tell people there, whenever you leave, like if it's to go to the bathroom or anything, I never slept out there or did any of that. 
so I didn't really deal with it. I never went with one of their white allies. But that you were told that if you ever have to leave the mansion property and to ever leave that area, to and you were a person of color, to bring one of your white allies with you to make sure that you are safe from police because their privilege will protect you from being assaulted. I left the mansion without help. I left the mansion without one of them. I never got assaulted. I never got wrongfully arrested like they said I would. And, <clears throat> sorry, it got a little cold here. When the Black Lives Matter movement was doing speeches, they had people of Muslim background there. They had Somalis and Middle Eastern people who were Muslim and practiced Islam. The people who were out there practicing Islam were actually trying to get people to be involved in their prayers that were out there. And there were times where they were trying to get the whites to join them in practicing Islamic prayer. They were talking about Christianity being just a creation of the white man and being a creation of the evil white man in order to promote hatred towards blacks and in order to promote hatred towards everybody else. They were mentioning that black people are still segregated to their ghetto communities and the ghettos that they live in. That is not true. Because my family moved away from those, and I grew up with my black father. We moved away from a bad black community because my father actually went out, got a job, and was not incentivized to be on welfare. That is why we left. <clears throat> and... That's the biggest problem with Black Lives Matter is if you're on their side and you're white, then you're a white ally. Why can't you just be an ally? If you are against them, you are either a racist or you, are a, or you hate your own kind. If you are at a Black Lives Matter rally and you disagree with what they say on any of their points, they will throw you out. They will mislead you to bring you into the movement, just like the person I was associated with did to bring me into it. And whenever you go against them, they will direct a lot of hate speech towards you. They will do everything they can to vilify your name. They will do everything in their power. The reason that they had a harder time doing this to me was because I am part black and I was a part of the Black Lives Matter movement. And they didn't want me to come out here and expose these things to you guys. Now, in terms of how they treated the white allies who were there, there was a woman who got up on stage speaking, right in front of the mansion, and she was talking about how the white allies are... They may be calling them white allies, but at the end of the day, they're still white. They still have their white privilege, and they owe it to them as reparations to use that white privilege to help them and to benefit them. And I don't see how that's not racist and how a protest movement that is about anti-racism and bringing people together and bringing communities together can say things like that. And... If you're going to support the Black Lives Matter movement, that is your decision. That is your right to free speech. But I'm going to tell you this. I have no problem with that, with your free speech or anything, until it gets to a point where you are threatening violence against people, you are threatening to kill people, you are threatening to burn things down, or you are committing violent acts such as looting, setting fires, damaging private property, damaging public property, and being violent. I can't support that. I can't support the hate speech that they were promoting. And I advise everybody who is affiliated with Black Lives Matter to do your research. Do your research, please. And learn the truth. And that's all I have. Thank you for tuning in. Divisive Legend tuning out. Real news, real talk, peace.